some of the key factors that people identified in this was that students that seemed to maintain their faith after they graduated, um, one had, were participating in and common experiences in um, intergenerational worship, and two, they were serving in the life of the church. Um, what did not emerge was a, a immediate relevance between participation and age specifically, Sunday morning age specifically, student ministry and their long-term faith development. So I'm gonna pass out some paperwork to you, but what you will see is that student ministries is moving to a strategy where we are integrating students beginning in seventh grade into our adult worship services and into serving in the life of the church, which means that um, you will no longer, we will no longer be facilitating age specific. Um, can I get a couple more volunteers, Blands? We got a whole load of stuff to, yeah, voluntold. There you go. Um, we will no longer be offering Sunday morning programming for our seventh and eighth grade. Our, our seventh through high school students on Sunday morning. Thank you, Dean. Um, and I want to go through the why behind that, um, the vision behind it, and some of the process that has led us to this point. And then, so I, I'm going to cover um, what you're getting right now are, are two things. One is like a single page sheet that is kind of what I would say the, the bullet points of, of what has led us to this conclusion. The larger packet is a much more sort of in-depth look at the research and our own experiences, our own feedback, along with some of the strategy um, going forward. Who's got the one-page sheet passing those out? Can I grab one from you? Because I just gave them all away. Thank you. Um, then I'm going to ask Tom and Gretchen. Jonathan is speaking at a retreat this weekend, so he may be showing up here late. Um, but then I'll ask Tom and Gretchen to share a little bit about the plan, the strategy in terms of the programming in this, in this new approach, this new strategy. And then, um, we'll have some time for questions and answers, but I'm going to pretty much refer mostly to this single page sheet because it, it kind of is the highlights of, of what we're going through. But for years now, um, research has been out there that's talking about the percentage of students who graduate high school and um, walk away from their faith. It's defined in different ways. Fuller Theological has done some work on this. Lifeway has done work on this. Uh, Barna has done work on this. But the numbers consistently sort of fall anywhere between 50 to 70 percent of students who have participated in youth group who have an active faith and yet who walk away from that. Obviously, in our hearts and minds, that's not good enough. That, that, that's not an acceptable um, number. In addition to that, as a part of this research, specifically the work that Fuller Theological has done in their um, youth institute, they begin to explore the question of those factors that, that I've already mentioned about what are, what are the key traits among students who continue to journey in their faith. And of those things, they said that you cannot, and we know this, you can't there's no silver bullet. There's no guarantee that if we do this program or we do it this way, this is going to guarantee that a kid walks with Jesus after they graduate from high school. Um, but they said if there's any one thing that is the greatest indicator of that, it's that they were participating in intergenerational worship. Um, Ten years ago when I was new at this church, I remember having a conversation, I think it was with Keith Duncan, where I began to wrestle with this. Keith, you, I, you might remember this. It may, maybe it wasn't you. Or maybe we need, can't remember 10 years ago, which is totally fine as well. Um, where I began to look at our Sunday morning, what was available, and I said, okay, on a Sunday morning, if a, if a family is a two-hour family, they can attend a worship service together. They could attend age-specific classes like track and middle school ministry and an adult Sunday school class, and they can serve together. And... And I, the question I asked was, which two of the three should they do? And we were having this conversation, and I, I remember at the time sort of wrestling with the fact that I didn't like, the because I thought there was value in all of them, immense value, and it was important, and I didn't like the fact that, that it had choose. And I, I remember circling high school ministries, like that that's a must, right? That's got to be number one. They got to be at track on Sunday mornings, and then sort of battling between the other two. 
Um, but wrestling with that, wrestling with if, if that was the right approach. And, and at that point in time, some of the research that is now available to us was just, just emerging, just coming out. Um, and, and I was starting to become somewhat familiar with, with that as well. Alongside of that, over the course of the last 10 years in student ministries, um, I've had many, many personal conversations with students where they're describing their post-high school experience in the church and anywhere from sort of marginal participation to highly, highly involved, becoming aware that they, it was this increasing sense that when they graduated from high school and graduated from Trek that they felt as though they graduated from church that they didn't know how to go from what it was that we were offering on a Sunday morning into the larger life and body and, and congregation. Um, and so that began to bother me. Um, they were seeing Trek as their church and, and, and not FBCG as, as a whole. And this, again, this wasn't just sort of fringe kids. This was highly involved, highly integrated um, students. So in the midst of all of this, we started to ask ourselves the question, what's the opportunity and what's our vision? And our vision is to integrate our students into the life of the church. Like we said, and that if you look on the first, on that single page, it says the goal is to graduate students who see themselves as a part of not only FBCG, but as a part of the church through student integration and weekend worship and serving. We want our students to understand that they are a vital part of the church body rather than a separate, separate entity for the purpose of long-term faith development. And so what we're talking about here for me, the vision, is, is not so much about a programmatic shift. That's what we will all feel. That's what it hurts when we think about losing something that's been valuable and meaningful. I'll talk more about that in a minute. But the vision that we see going forward is an opportunity for our students to integrate into the life of the church and for us as a church. So again, for me, it's not so much a programmatic shift as it is a cultural shift. What we're talking about here is us as FBCG seeing our 7th through 12th grade students as not just our kids, but our younger brothers and sisters in Christ. To see them worshiping alongside them, to see them on our stages and, and, and uh, leading worship, to see them um, involved in our children's ministries, leading elementary kids and preschool kids and working in the nursery, working in our tech booth, doing the things that you and I all do to help serve in our church, but with us and alongside of us. Um, one, because they're gifted by the Holy Spirit too, and we need them. We need them participating in it. But also because it seems that this is something that is absolutely critical in their long-term faith development. Um, now, we will continue to, to do age-specific programming. Um, we'll, and I'm going to have Tom and Gretchen and Jonathan talk a little bit about that in just a moment. But we're not going to do it on Sunday morning. On Sunday morning, we're going to say, be a part of the rest of what is happening here. Come be a part of our worship services. Come be a part of, of um, serving together. And understand yourself to be a part of this larger thing called the church that God has called us to, that, that he's gifted you in, that he has given you um, things that we need from you in order to, to grow. Um, now, that being said, I, I firmly believe in this vision. I've been wrestling with this, obviously. I know for many of you may be hearing this for the very first time in this moment. And I've been wrestling with it literally for years. Um, so I have had more time to process this than most of you. But in the same point in time, I understand, I feel a degree of grief. I've spent the last 10 years of my life helping build Trek Sunday morning into a vibrant, valuable ministry. I've, I've taught there and I've met kids there. We've seen kids reached and impact. And none of this is driven out of a thing that says, Trek or middle school ministries is failing or bad on Sunday mornings. That's not at all. It's all being driven by vision towards something that we think God is leading us to in ways that we can continue to increase the impact of the ministry and the long-term faith development of, 
our students. We know when we hear about change of this nature that there is a natural grief that comes alongside it. Um, this is not a disconnected thing for me. Not only did, did I lead this ministry for 10 years, my daughter is a freshman in high school. She's here every Sunday. She loves it. She thinks, she thinks it's great. It, it, it's deeply personal towards us. Um, this is not a decision that is being made out of convenience or out of um, laziness. I don't think anybody would accuse us of that, but it's, it, it is a decision that is being directed out of vision towards something greater. Pastor Brian has often um, challenged us as leaders to think about leadership in terms of understanding our current reality, defining that, sharing that with the people, and leading them to a preferred future. The, per, the preferred future that I can see for us is our students worshiping alongside us, of, of serving alongside us, of seeing themselves as a part of the church and graduating and saying either it is natural and for me to continue doing what I've been doing over the last seven years of my life or, or seeing themselves experience that someplace else as they go off to college and career and all of those sorts of things. Um, and so as we lead through this, we understand that uh, anytime there's change, there's, there's grief. There's, there's a mourning of, of, of what was, and we want to recognize that and be sensitive towards that. We had Tom and Gretchen met with our student leaders earlier this morning and processed through some of this with them, and that was hard. At the same time, of course, these kids are so great that they start thinking about, well, how can we, how can we do this best, and here's some feedback, and here's some ideas on how do we, what about outreach, how do we get at that, and we'll, we'll talk about that. And, but, it, but it's, there's a sense of loss that comes alongside of this. Um, but that being said, we, we believe, we are convinced that, that this is the vision that God has for us going forward. Um, just in terms of the process that has unfolded, just so you're aware of kind of all that has happened behind the scenes, uh, we have met with uh, a variety of different subgroups of parents, of our volunteer leaders, um, of, of FBCG staff, of church leadership, of the EC board of our church. I've presented this in multiple circles and in multiple ways, received feedback, tweak, got input um, in order to give you what it is that, that we're presenting to you um, today. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to ask, so just for clarity's sake here, our fifth and sixth grade program, which is a part of our student ministries, will remain largely the same. There will be Sunday morning program for our students up through sixth grade, and, um, and that will be available at all campuses um, to our kids. Now, I, we don't know exactly if it'll be all hours at all campuses or if each campus will have specific hours. We, we, we depends on kind of where the need is and that sort of thing. Um, beginning in seventh grade, when our students enter seventh grade, we will begin to integrate them into um, our adult worship services, into serving opportunities, and that will continue um, through 12th grade. Alongside of all of that, there will be age-specific fifth and sixth grade. So fifth and sixth grade will still have Club 56 on Wednesday nights. Um, seventh and eighth grade will still have DTP on, on, did I say Sunday night for Club 56? Wednesday night? DTP will have... Um, seventh and eighth grade will have DTP on Sunday night. Um, high school ministries will continue to meet in their D groups and some other things, which I'm going to ask them to share here in a little bit. But um, in our Sunday morning program, we're going to be worshiping alongside of, of our kids. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask, um, again, seventh and eighth grade is not experiencing a, a ton of transition. Well, they are middle school, but Jonathan's going to tell you a little bit about just kind of uh, DTP on Sunday evening, some of what will be available for our 7th and 8th grade students, maybe a little bit about what's going to happen on Sunday morning for our 5th our and 6th grade students, and then where we will feel some of the change even more significantly in our high school plan, Tom and Gretchen are going to come up and 
um, kind of walk you through that a little bit. And then I'll return. We'll stay up here together and um, answer any questions that we're able to answer uh, in the midst of that. So Jonathan, why don't you come share? So I'll address first why, why the split, 5th uh, and 6th is 7th and 8th grade. Why not just go all the way through middle school uh, and then cut it off at high school and then have um, the, our Sunday morning multi-generational multi -generational worship happen um, from high school on up? Why the, why the cutoff at 6th grade? So 5th and 6th grade, uh, as we were just discussing and working through this, uh, we didn't necessarily feel that the 5th and 6th grade students were – um, going to be as capable of sitting in a service, really we didn't feel it was going to be as beneficial for them to be a part of the large group uh, service as it might be for them to be in their classrooms with their age group. Seventh and eighth grade, we saw it differently. As Sterling said, this has really been something that's born out of vision. I haven't wrestled with it as long as Sterling has, just simply because I'm not as old as he is. Um, <laughs> so this all became a part of a conversation in Amy my life about five years yeah. ago. I, yeah. In some way, I have to throw something Yeah, out. yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> about five years ago, when I started seeing the research and getting the information and having conversations with other youth pastors that I was connected to at that point uh, before I came out here, uh, we were having these conversations. One of them was just students being mentored and having multiple mentors, adults, um, adult mentors in their, in their life. Uh, one was students actively serving within the church in some capacity, and then the other was these multi-generational worship services where students are actually a part of uh, the body and worshiping together, whether it's with parents or at least with other adults. Um, so that was something I began wrestling with about five years ago. And um, what, we've, what we've done is we've plugged in the things that were easy to plug in, finding mentors, building some of those uh, relationships, getting students plugged in and serving. But where it came to something that was going to be pretty drastic on Sunday morning, um, it was a little bit more difficult to push that through. Um, right now, the way that I see it, and I think the way that we see it in student ministries, um, this is something that we truly believe, and we believe that the data is accurate. We believe that this really is something that is good for the students, that is going to be way more beneficial for them in the long run, not just looking at what they're going to enjoy the most for the next four years, but what's going to impact their life for the next 40 to 50 years, uh, looking down the road. And we truly believe this, and so that is why we are just all in right now and moving this direction. Um, so, 7th and 8th grade, the reason for the cutoff is we believe this truly is better and more beneficial for them in the long run, and we believe that they can handle it sitting through the services. Uh, they're capable of that. Um, for our 7th and 8th grade ministry that's going to take place on Sunday night still, that is uh, still known as DTP, our Discipleship Training Program. Um, so that is still going to be happening, same time as usual, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Um, and as I've said before, like some of the, the other elements that we believe are beneficial. We have employed those, whether it's adults um, working with our students. We have um, an adult leader working with like a college kid student that's also working with our students. So they have multiple levels that are being poured into them. Um, and our fifth and sixth grade ministry, which takes place on Wednesday nights, our Club 56 ministry, we have the same thing going on where we have an adult that's uh, working with a high school student that is then working with fifth and sixth grade students. So our students are getting multiple levels uh, of mentors in their lives, someone that is a little younger, um, closer to their age that they can look up to, something that is achievable, um, but then also an adult that is in their life that, that is wise and will speak truth into their life and can be more of a parent uh, rather than just a friend. Um, so that ministry will continue on Wednesday nights from 6.30 to 8 p.m. For our fifth and sixth grade students on Sunday mornings, um, the way that we do things won't change at all. The curriculum that we're going to use is is going to continue on with what children's ministry is doing right now. They use the true curriculum. What we love about this is that it not only teaches the students the Bible and, and, and allows them to see God's uh, big picture of, of his story from beginning to end, but it also um, allows them some elements of response. Um, and, and the students going through uh, the children's ministry right now, uh, they're catching that vision and they're learning how to respond to God. And so we want to carry that through fifth and sixth grade. Uh, we have age-appropriate material for them, so we'll continue that on, on Sunday mornings through the 5th and 6th grade years before they enter into 7th and 8th grade, and we'll then join you all in worship. Perfect. Thank you, Jonathan. One thing I was going to say as Tom and Gretchen come up that I neglected to mention in sort of the process of this is we as a team, too, have been meeting with other churches who are further down the road who've made this change in, um, in order to understand kind of how they program things 
and what mistakes were made along the way, things that they wish they could have gone back and done differently, things that they realized like, you know, after the fact, like, oh, there's an opportunity here. And so some of what they're presenting has come out of, you know, many, many conversations with other youth pastors and churches and, and parents who have walked through this. One of the things we realized in this, and, and again, this isn't necessarily important, um, but there are, there, there are a lot of churches that have made this change and seen valuable benefit as a result of, of what it's done and have been incredibly helpful in us understanding what's in front of us and how to do this um, as, as well as we possibly can. So go ahead, talk about high school ministries. Yeah, I, th I think f first of all, and we'll talk about the structure of what that looks like. Um, first of all, when we've considered what Trek Sunday morning has, has been over the last however long, 10, 15, 20 years, one of, one of the key things that, that we've observed and key things that students have told us is that really the, the, the most important part of that is a sense of community. Um, when we do teaching and, and worship and play games and do things like that, but it, it seems to be the community um, that, that keeps kids coming back where they can see their friends weekly and have those touch points. And so a, as we integrate into worship services, we're, we're excited that that community um, can, can remain as students go to church services and sit near each other or, or go out to lunch afterwards or whatever, but we're also trying to be really sensitive to what, what are ways that we can sort of replicate that community within the other programs that we'll offer. Um, so, so our main program uh, that we'll have moving forward is our D group ministry. D group has been the thing that, that we think is the best thing that we do. Um, that, that we've seen the most transformation. Um, students are able to be in small groups with, with adult mentors and just more of an intimate setting where they can talk about real life and, and get to know one another and build relationships. And so we've seen a lot of transformational growth come from that. So what, what that will look like moving forward is instead of having D groups that meet in homes every generally Sunday, we'll have groups meet, D groups meet in home three Sundays a month. And then one Sunday a month, everybody will meet here in the student center. Something that we did um, in, in the fall was a D group kickoff. All groups met together for two hours. We had teaching and worship, small group time, games, and so kind of a, a typical youth group night, maybe even an extended Trek Sunday morning feel where, where all D groups will meet here and, and worship in a large um, group community. And then uh, in home throughout those three weeks where they're in homes, We'll have a unified curriculum, which, which also ties into what we'll do here at what we'll call D Group Gather. Um, and that curriculum will, um, throughout the week uh, that the people are in, in homes, we'll have video teaching from myself or Gretchen or maybe both of us or possibly maybe a student leader or an adult leader at some point. That, that every group, when they meet um, in their home, would have about 10 or 15 minutes of, of video teaching that is presented to them that they watch. Um, together and then D group leaders will be equipped with discussion guides and different things to to be able to facilitate that discussion um, which we're so we like the idea of having a structure and having it be unified but we also um, know that one of the strengths of D groups is the ability um, for for leaders to kind of sense the direction the group needs to go or for a student to have an issue that needs to be discussed and so we're excited um, to have a general teaching but also um, for, for leaders to have the flexibility where if they, if they need to have a fun night or if they just need to talk about something specifically, that each group will kind of go the direction um, that, it, that it needs to. And just so that we're clear, much of what they're covering, if you look at pages six and seven on the larger packet, this is sort of what um, they are, are referring to. And again, I always sort of say when we've gone through this with other families as well like this is not set in concrete in terms of like there's a sample schedule like don't go enter this into your calendar at home like th th this is a this is a example of what we're thinking we're still working on how this will get implemented exactly in the fall yeah so um, we're excited for that large group community to occur once a month within this room within uh, a large D group gather um, but we're also aware that there needs to be further sense of, of community and outreach. And so what we're being led to so far is to kind of up our outreach event game. So currently we have an outreach event once every couple months, three months, depends on the semester. Our plan 
um, and, and kind of the progression of what things would look like for a new student trying to be involved. Um, we, we would have an event once a month, and so that's a second large group community time per month that, that um, Trek students can have. So an event once a month. So just an example, what we'll do on February 11th is a dodgeball tournament. Um, so on Saturday, we're, gonna, we're, we're kicking around the idea of having more events on Fridays and Saturdays, so we free up Sunday evening for D-group or D-group gather. Um, but we also give students, that's feedback we've received from, from some parents to give um, students an ability to have some fun and safe environment to go hang out and invite friends to uh, on a weekend night. So um, just kind of a progression that we're thinking is, is it a dodgeball event, and then the following week we'd have a D-group gather. So the student brings their friend to dodgeball, the next week they can, they can come into this room where Every, there's groups established, but that student could join a group um, f for the night and get to know those students and kind of see what our DNA is, kind of what how this culture is. And then the following week, we would hope to see that student get plugged in by going over um, to a home for, for a D group that night. Mm -hmm. um, so some of those events will be our retreats, just like we do now with the fall and winter retreat. Um, and then I think the, the last major programmatical thing is, is that our mission trip ministry. The, this summer we're going to Milwaukee, Mexico, Toronto, and Ecuador. That, that will remain the same where students from all, all campuses and everything will be able to participate in those summer missions experiences. Go ahead, Gretchen. I was just going to say, can you speak somewhat specifically to the idea of, I know like m many people have asked the question, like, well, how would a new student get plugged in? So as you, as you share some of that, like maybe give examples of how you guys see then, because these guys bring their friends and they, you know, um, what that looks like too. Um, so we hope that we're going to have multiple entry points for new students to come and check out our ministry, which would be our events and our retreats. And then the D group gathers provide a nice opportunity for a student to come check out what a D group is about, maybe make some connections in that group. And then if they're ready to take the next step, they can join um, the D group the next week when they meet in homes. But our our other hope is that our students will get to the point where they see FBCG adult worship as a place where they can invite their friends to worship alongside of them and alongside of their families. A lot of our students hang out and then they all go out to lunch after Trek and we hope that that keeps happening. We hope that they will meet um, for Sunday morning worship and that that can be a place as well for them to bring their friends because FBCG is, is their church as much as it is ours, the adults. Yeah. And I think um, one of the things that I've heard from Tom and Gretchen too is part of their job going forward is to help create that on Sunday mornings. One, one of the things that we've learned from Harvester and some of the other churches, that's a church in St. Louis that's kind of a couple years ahead of us in this whole thing, is that what they've experienced is that it's become normative for students to, to say, come, come to a service with me, come be a part of, of what they're doing. And so there wasn't sort of this lost invitation opportunity as it relates to kids reaching out to their peers. Sunday morning church um, became another venue for another, another opportunity for that um, as well. And we're excited about seeing our students do that um, in the midst of this. Yeah, so the other, the other thing I want to speak about is we really hope to see our students engaging in serving opportunities at FBCG. We think that this intergenerational serving is an important part, and so we want um, to teach our students how to plug in. And so we are already working ahead with other ministries, particularly with the worship ministry, with the tech ministry, um, with ushers and greeters. We hope to see teenagers involved on a Sunday morning. We want them handing you your bulletins. We want somebody playing guitar on the stage because we believe that they're an integral part of our body and we think it's a mistake to just put them in their corner and say have fun doing teenage things and we'll see you later and we think as well like as an adult you know the experience of going to a new church is unless you're in a very small church where people notice every new face and and bring you on in a lot of times you as the new person have to take a first step and that's kind of one of the main things we want to prepare our students for is how do you get, when you get to a new church, how do you find a serving opportunity? How do you find a place to plug in and how do you make those relational connections? We think that mentoring is really strong component of what we do. And in the discipleship groups, there's 
natural mentoring. What we want is to give our students the opportunities to make more connections with adults. And we see that happening in their serving, where they are not only learning a new skill, not only bringing their gifts to the, to the local church, but also being discipled by another qualified adult. Yeah. Um, part of some of this research has talked about, you know, like the old adage back in a day was, if you had 25 students in a group, you wanted five adults, you wanted that, that five to one ratio. Like we're trying to reverse that. We're trying to have five adults in every student's life. So if that's somebody that they, you know, co-usher with on a Sunday morning, that's like, hey, this is how you do this. And hey, there's a new person. Let, let's go talk to them or let's make sure they find a seat. Or if that's somebody that they serve alongside of in a children's ministry, their D group leader, Tom and Gretchen, like we're trying to um, integrate a, 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 a strategy that will reverse, not, not five students to every one adult, five adults to every one student is, is the goal. And so to, in order to accomplish that, we need them alongside of all of us in, in the midst of that.